We're in Fort Worth, Texas at the Will Rogers Memorial Coliseum for the 2003 World Championship Appaloosa Horse Show. Distinctive, a champion at heart, talented and beautiful. All words synonymous with the legendary Appaloosa. A horse exceptional in its mix of style and ability with an appeal reaching out to both family and the avid competitor. Join us as we take a look at this unique and colorful breed, Appaloosa, the horse nature destined to be different. The Appaloosa's colorful ancestry can be traced back to the earliest recorded time. Like all horses in North America, the Appaloosa descends directly from horses brought to this continent by early Spanish explorers. The Nez Perce Indians of the inland northwest deserve much of the credit for the Appaloosa horses we have today. The mountain valleys and rolling grasslands of the great northwest were ideal for raising horses. A river that early fur traders called the Palouse flowed through the Nez Perce homelands of eastern Washington and northern Idaho. Along these banks, the spotted horses thrived, and early settlers began referring to them as Pelusi horses. Through time, they became simply known as Appaloosas. The modern Appaloosa is a superb all-around athlete, capable of competing in the upper echelons of any event imaginable. Many breeds can claim one special attribute, but the Appaloosa rightfully claims diversity as its own. With their legendary stamina and endurance, Appaloosas are famous for setting speed records on the racetrack as well as excelling in all levels of Western and English disciplines such as dressage, reining, and cutting. Outside the competitive ranks, the Appaloosa is a perfect family horse. Owners learn to treasure each individual Appaloosa for its own unique disposition talent and curiosity. On today's show, we'll be focusing on the games classes, the Nez Perce Stake Race, the Camus Prairie Stump Race, and the always exciting Rope Race. We're starting with the placing brackets here in the open Camus Prairie Stump Race, a little modified version of the barrel racing. This is Tim Top once again with you, Richard Langford. Hey, Tim, it's good to be here with this uh, Appaloosa Horse Club uh, show. Uh, might mention some of the people, uh, Tim, that are not familiar with Horse Against Horse, which the Appaloosa Horse Club is famous for, is uh, the two sets of barrels. There's a 50-yard line in the middle of the arena. The first set of barrels are 30 feet from the starting line. They're 75 feet apart. And then the third barrel back home is 94 feet. And that's a standard pattern uh, that we run when we set up two sets of barrels uh, in the arena. Now Richard, we talked about the uh, Christmas tree the other day. Why don't you go ahead and explain how that works here? Yes, it's it's a five-second start. When you come into the arena, uh, they uh, start the light system. It's one through five, and uh, the fifth the light, of course, is the green light for go. And uh, you have... If you jump the starting line, Tim, then you're disqualified. And then it will tell who crosses the line. If they foul, it'll tell you. Then it'll also tell you who comes home and wins. And you know from watching some of these races, you need the electric light system because they're just so close. This is the placing races. We're looking at 569 Drifter X Change and Sherry Grease Runner running against the 1054 horse Zippo's Dandelion and Ken Knowlton. Yeah, Ken Hale's from uh, New York. He's been working on this horse for about four years. Sherry, she hails from uh, Indiana. And you can see that Sherry got the jump on the line if you're watching it real close. And that's one of the three or four big advantages you have to have. And she'll take the win. Your Sherry Grease Renner and Drifter's Exchange, your fifth in the world. And 1054 Zippo's Dandy Lion and Ken Milton will be sixth in the world. You know, Sherry's a former former world champion uh, herself. Uh, a lot of these uh, people that competed today in this uh, uh, stump race, uh, Tim, they're former world champions. Some of them are multi-world champions. Sue coming in right now, Sue Scobie, the first one in the arena. Uh, she's won uh, this event several times, I think, this year at the Nice Nose. So she was the uh, Nice Nose uh, pole champion. So these people are really, really strong competitors. Sue so Scobie, once again on the 721 horse here, as Richard just mentioned, the horse's eyes lucky. 
She'll be running against Dynamic Charlie, number 264. Courtney Henry is the jockey of that horse. Yeah, Courtney's going to get a bad start, but it's going to turn out good for her. Sue got a little Sue too quick. Got, Sue got even a worse start. <laughs> now, see, if that had been called by the judge, it, nah, they might have had a tendency maybe not to call Sue over, but the light caught her, and so Sue, Sue's going to be in fourth place. The laser beam does not lie. <laughs> You folks can see that yellow light there on the uh, lower part of the Christmas tree that's showing the uh, starting line foul for Sue Scooby. You know, we used to, uh, years years ago, Tim, uh, we did not have the light system, and boy, it was it was really tough for a judge to make the call. When there's a real close race in the old days, what they would do, they would just call it a draw and let's rerun and hope that somebody has a better win. Now we're down to what we came for. I can tell you this right now. These two people, Jeff is from uh, Indiana and uh, Sandy Hales from Ohio, they're real good friends. And number 223 is Jeff Lankford with WM Mr. Moneysworth. Oh, go on, Jeff. The other horse is 285, my ace on deck, and Sandra Bennett. These two racing for the World Championship and the Reserve World Championship. This is going to be a close one. Yep, she sure did by not a lot. We'll see that on that finish line camera that we've got there that you'll see just how close this world championship came down to. Well, the race was uh, run on the run home, uh, Tim. Uh, Jeff got hung up a little bit in the third barrel. Sandy's got a real fast horse when it comes home, and that was proven right there. Uh, Jeff now is the reserve world champion. He was a reserve world champion in the non-pro uh, barrels the other day, so looks like he's in second place a couple of times. But uh, anyway, that was a good race, as you could see. Uh, one little thing, and you'll get beat. Uh, there's just so many uh, variables when you run against horse. You know, I've often said that that's what you want. If you're going to have the world championship race, let's have a good one, make it close, and somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. And what I like about the Appaloosa competitors, Tim, they're just so uh, congenial. You know, everybody wants to win, but when it's all over with, they'll go back in the runway. Uh, those two people will be shaking hands, and 15, 20 minutes from now, they'll be laughing and everything else. Sandra Bennett and my ace on decks, your world champion, the reserve world champion, Jeff Langford with WM, Mr. Moneysworth. We're here with Jeff Langford and WM. MR Mr. Moneysworth, his reserve champion horse. Jeff, that was a pretty close race. Very close. Uh, that's one thing about the Appaloosa horse against horse. It's very exciting. The crowd loves it. The competitive out here with these kids, and uh, it's just a lot of fun to be part of it. Did you know that you would come in second, or was it too close to tell while you were running? Well, I knew a type of horse Sandy had, and she had a lot of run going home. And I think like, I got a third barrel ahead of her, but the whole horse outrun mine home. But it was close, but that's why we had the light system. This is our 2003 world champion in the Camas Prairie Stump Race, Sandy Bennett, and her horse, my ace on deck. Good run, Sandy. Thank you very much. And as you came across, we talked to Jeff. He wasn't sure who had won it. He thought maybe you did. And it was pretty obvious that you knew it when you came across. I had to look at the light. I saw the light and was rather thrilled. <laughs> I bet so. What can you tell us about your horse? He's been doing this about a year. He's only had about a year of barrel racing. He was working on working with cattle. Before he did this, he's 10 years old, so they're, all, they're never too old to try something new. <laughs> Congratulations, it worked out for you. We now take a break from the action for this Appaloosa Tip of the Month, brought to you by Buchanan Home Service. For today's trainer tip, I want to discuss the term collection, uh, specifically collection in a Western Pleasure Horse. Collection is something that is an imperative uh, element of almost every training discipline. And one way to describe collection, the best way that I can explain it to someone, is to envision a horse uh, standing loose in a pasture, and that horse all of a sudden being scared by something that's come at him or uh, something that's forced him to flee rapidly uh, one direction or another. So at the point in time where that horse is coiled on his hindquarters and lunging forward, is a time when all of its energy is harnessed in its hindquarters and moving forward. And at that point, its, it's uh, motion is, is upward. Uh, it's light on its front end. And it can go either direction. Uh, so this is what we're trying to achieve on a loose rein in a Western Pleasure class. We want to achieve that forward motion and all that coiling and that energy on the hindquarter. It's a difficult thing to do because we have to do it on a loose rein. The basic way to do it is to provide forward motion through your legs and to block with your hand. That, provide, that, that provides resistance, so you get the energy from behind, the resistance from front, and that provides a, a calm, collected way of movement. So what we do to get collection 
is to go to our leg here, fall with our hand here, and then put our hand down and balance that point. And the point of balance, when, that, when you have leg, hand, then release, and the horse is flowing naturally, is a collected horse. This is what we're trying to achieve in Western Pleasure and pretty much every other discipline of the horse industry. This Appaloosa Tip of the Month was brought to you by Buchanan Pump Service. The Appaloosa has a firm foundation in the equine world through the hard work of the Appaloosa Horse Club. Since 1938, the Appaloosa Horse Club has served enthusiasts all around the globe and provides people the opportunity to enjoy their Appaloosas in many different ways. By becoming a member of the Appaloosa Horse Club, you too can take advantage of what this breed has to offer. For more information about the Appaloosa and for events happening in your area, visit www.appaloosa.com or call 208-882-5578. We'll be right back after this. There's nothing more exciting than horse against horse racing, including that photo finish. Who are you relying on at the finish line? With the horse light, you no longer have to rely on the blink of someone else's eye. The horse light is easy to use, easy to operate, easy to transport, highly accurate, affordable, and it includes everything you need to start. Horse light, most fairness in the start and most accurate at the finish. Visit horselight.com for more information. Back to the Appaloosa Horse. Okay, we're all set, uh, Tim, to, with the uh, rope race. It'll get exciting. And this is the open rope race. Tim Top, Richard Langford, along with you here in this. And there's going to be 11 horses go down. Only 10 ropes, Tim. I can see nine ropes. Oh, then somebody scratched. So we have 10 horses, nine ropes. Now we're down to nine people and uh, eight ropes. Now the fellow that just got beat has won this race a few years ago. Uh, there's a couple of other exhibitors in here that uh, have won this before. Uh, you'll watch 465, that's Jim Jerkowski, and then his son, uh, 780, Jeff Jerkowski. They're kind of famous for getting down to the finals. So we'll see what happens right here. A lot of times the men root for the men and the ladies root for the ladies, but only two ladies in this event here today. These ropes are about four foot long and are usually a couple of feet above your horse's head. That 1082 was eliminated. That's Austin Peacock. And see if Patrick is horse. Yeah. He got down there and he got squeezed out. And uh, that's what happens. Sometimes um, they buddy up. This is noted, Tim, uh, for kind of a physical race. And if you go back to the old timers, uh, they would do the things as pull your bridle off. They would spur the other horse. They have been known to cut the cinches on other horses, but we've kind of tamed it down. But I like the two girls staying alive. And this time for 32s, the out one. That's Jockey Socks and John Wilson. Yep, he just got squeezed out, and there wasn't any place for him to go. Just kind of keep your eyes on the two Jerkoskis. Uh, they're, they're pretty tough. And... We're not down to where a lot of the jockeying goes on. Everybody right now, Tim, runs to stay alive. But you got to be careful of the five-second line. They may go over. And we have one that went over. One jumped to light. You can see the uh, horse light. light. Yep. Yep. Now the judges have to make a decision, and they have to call who went over. And they will. And if you're the guy that went over, you're not going to let them know you're the one that went over. Let's see who it is. All right. Oh, the former world champion just went over. Jeff Jukowski and Caillou Spirit. So we're down to six riders. And uh, about now we're going to do a little shoving. Somebody's going to shove one way or the other. It's a five-second start. You don't want to jump the line. They're a good, clean start. Kathy's in trouble. <laughs> well, Kathy Moss, <laughs> she just out muscled. Carla Peacock and Wannabe Brassies is the one eliminated yep. there, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's something you call luck. One thing about the rope race, Tim, you got to have a horse that'll come down, and when you ask for the woe, it's got to stop. If you overshoot those ropes, very difficult 
to turn your horse around and come back. They just won't come back to the ropes. So the trick is you got to back your horse up real quick and get it. But that takes a lot of quick thinking. Now we're down to what? We got four Five. guys and a gal. Yep. Yep. Kathy. The girl's still in it. Yeah. But Kathy's no stranger to this. She runs on the regional level. She got a bad start. Yep. Somebody scrambles for a rope. Somebody will get up out of their saddle. Watch this. Watch this. Watch somebody go up. Watch somebody. Kathy can't get her horse to go forward. She's got to get out and back up. Plus, it looked like the guys are kind of squeezing her away anyhow. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I tell you, this is a crowd pleaser. Uh, uh, it's something that's very, very unique with the Appaloosa Horse Club. And uh, I'm surprised we only had uh, 10 entries. Uh, normally, uh, we'll have maybe as much as 20, and we eliminate down to the 10. But now we're down to where there's four guys. Well, actually, they've eliminated 232. Ooh, well, they saw something. Kathy's still see. in it. So John Gillespie the third is now out. Yeah, I didn't see something. Something happened. I don't know what. That's why we pay the judges. Now, they might shove Cat. Well, he's out. He's out. That's automatically. He's out. We've had cases, Tim, where maybe four or five horses be left. Three of them jumped the line. Well, the world champions decided right there. And that's at Millhouse in the state of DeHart being eliminated. Well, we've got my pick still in there. He's on the white horse, Jim Jerkowski. I don't know if he won it last year at the World or not. If it wasn't last year, it was a year before he won it, but on a different horse. There's only been two horses that I know of that have ever won this event three times. One was Pablo Joe, and the other one was uh, Caliani Baldi. So this is a kind of a tough event. Now, Jim. Yeah, and Jim does it. Kind of edges Kathy over. So Kathy Moss is out this trip with just being Andy. This time they are eliminated. Great run by Jokoski. Uh, Kathy thought she was going into it, and about the time she's slowing her horse down to reach up, Jim drives forward and reaches up and gets a rope. Now, I'm going to say what's going to happen here. One horse is going to shove the other horse, or one horse is going to get his head cocked over in front this, of the other. And this will be Jim Jakowski. He's on the gray horse, 465, and the number 204 horse. Hey, here we go. See who gets... Yeah. Here's Robert Main and Jimmy Impressive. He's got the front of him. It's all over. Jim Jerkoski, Tim, uh, a very versatile cowboy in the Appaloosa horses. He's very versatile, can do a lot. He works in the cattle classes, can even run the games and stuff. It's executed here. Uh, he's a pleasure man, a halter man. He just does it all. Him and his wife are really great for the Appaloosa horse. So Jim Jerkoski and Captain Zip Ahoy, world champions in the open rope race. We now bring you this Appaloosa Horse Moment in Time, sponsored by the Foundation Appaloosa Breeders. Few who ever saw a high sign and his longtime partner, Jack Hennig, will ever forget them or their electrifying performances. Fold in 1972, High Sign was by High Time and out of Little Naz with Mansfield Comanche and Joker B bloodlines. High Sign, a leopard stallion with a mane that was described by many as looking like a silk cloak, appeared to be the horse that Ernest Thomas Seton saw when he wrote, He is swift and strong among the swift ones, but it is that flowing mane and tail that mark him chiefly from afar. Hennig and High Sign won more than 54 national and world titles in a number of classes, including working cow horse, calf roping, and reining. High Sign earned seven High Point Performance Awards and carried the breed's colors when he won numerous awards in the open all breed arenas. He earned a National Reining Horse Association Bronze Trophy and the Open Roping Championship at the 1979 Quarter Horse Congress. On October 31, 1992, the Appaloosa World lost the Great One just a short time before he was due to make a very special World Show appearance. In 1992, High Sign was inducted into the Appaloosa Horse Club Hall of Fame. His progeny continue today to display many of the characteristics of their sire who had earned the equine world's respect and admiration. This moment in time has been brought to you by the Foundation Appaloosa Breeders. The Appaloosa has a firm foundation in the equine world through the hard work of the Appaloosa Horse Club. For more information about the Appaloosa and for events happening in your area, visit www.appaloosa.com or call 208-882-5566.
1.78. Elegant. Color. Movement. Class. Style. For your next world champion prospect, or for a great companion to ride down the trail, visit us at www.larabeeappaloosans.com. Having trouble getting up on your horse? Well, with a push of a button, you can lower your stirrup by three inches with the Easy Up Stirrup Extender. And with a flip of the toe, the stirrup snaps back into place. Whether you're plagued with back problems, tight-fitting clothes, or frequent mounting, the Easy Up Stirrup Extender is always there when you need it. So give us a call, toll-free, at 877-865-1497 for the low price of $89. Mounting your horse is only a click away. Welcome back to the 2003 World Championship Appaloosa Horse Show. The Appaloosa Horse, famous for its colorful coat patterns, drew huge crowds as the most colorful at halter class kicked off. 44 riders from across the world rode in to show their unique horses with a variety of Appaloosa traits, including colored coat patterns, mottled skin, striped hooves, and sclera or whites of the eyes, which looks much like the human eye. In this special class, the horses are judged 60% on color and 40% on conformation. Although all of the competing horses have their own unique patterns, the judges had to choose just one as the world champion. Mr. All Luminary with rider Debbie Hyatt took third place in the class, and absolutely a dream, and David Parlier became the world's reserve champion. Finally, the most colorful at halter world champion, colored by vision, ridden by Steve Cruz. We're here with the 2003 world champion in the most colorful. Steve Cruz is showing this horse, colored by vision. Steve, talk about the sire of this horse. He's a vision maker, a multiple national and world champion sire of all of our horses. Um, he's a nine-year-old sta Appaloosa stallion, a Dreamfinder bred stud, stands in Arizona. Did you feel you had a chance tonight winning this with this horse? Yeah, I did. I didn't think I would win it as convincingly as I did, but... It worked out that way. Three out of the five, right? Yep. Not bad. No, nope. pretty good. We now take you to the Nez Perce Stake Race for the exciting qualifying races. With the bracket system, it's just uh, for you folks that are familiar with drag racing, it's the same type of deal. Same type. Uh -huh. uh, with the exception in, uh, in, in our horses, uh, you have to be beaten twice before you're eliminated. Nice clean start for both these horses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the horse on our side of the arena is uh, the Pennsylvania horse. and. The gal on the other side is uh, Indi Indiana, and she's going to finish up in ninth. So when you're in the position that the cherry is on the far side of the arena, you breathe pretty easy. When, <laughs> you, yeah, when your opponent knocks over a pole, you get, you know, hey, I've got it made. But I've seen, Tim, I've seen situations where she slows up, boom, she'll get a pole. She went through good. Now, if both of them knock down a pole in the horse against horse, they get a rerun. Have a rerun. Well, the first horse in the arena is uh, the Cherry Drifter horse that uh, comes in from Missouri. And Ken, uh, he's been riding that horse a long time. The horse on the far side of the arena comes from Missouri. These two horses have run against each other throughout the year. I don't, if people not familiar with poles, we might mention that they are 21 feet apart. There are six of them, and the starting line is 21 feet from the first pole. To see what happened to Cherry Drifter, he drifted across the line, he's, he's automatically out. His next run will be for the horses ending up 5th and 6th. Uh, these two good horses, uh, Valerie Allen over on the Palomino horse and Lenny Griffith on the uh, uh, stud horse on our side of the field. It's going to be a question probably, Tim. Who leaves the poles up? Watch this. They're both good. Well, the stud horse got out good. This one will go to Lenny's horse. 
close. Yeah, it was close. You, you, you know, you re it's really close. Well, we're down now to third and fourth. And that's one of the Alden. The first thing is in the 16-horse uh, brackets, you want to get into the eight, then you want to get down to the uh, final four. That's where that's where it really counts. You can't get to the top unless you get to the final four. You've got two cowgirls here. The one on the fourth side in the red shirt is from Kentucky. The one on our side is from Virginia. And the crowd gets into it now. When, watch them when they come They're Almost equal. Nice turns on both ends. A little more speed on our side. You betcha. There's there. That was the difference in that race right there, Tim. You picked up on that real quick. That horse came home hot. I always say this. They shift into another gear. This is what you come for. The Missouri horse comes in first. Uh, this horse, you might notice, has no tie down, doesn't run against it. Lori uh, Peterson on this side of the thing uses a tie down. She has the older horse of the two. I think Lori's horse, uh, Spotted T, is 23 years old. This is going to be good. A really good to start. Yeah, just a bad turn over there. Yeah, see, it's all over now. Yep. So, 23 year old horse, he's going to be the world champ. You betcha. A great horse. Uh, we've seen that horse uh, many, many, many a time. Uh, her daughter normally will ride it in the non pro events, and uh, this horse is an exceptionally good horse. It finished uh, the other night or the other day, it finished. Uh, second in the uh, non-pro steer dog. So it's a, it's a horse, like a lot of Appaloosas can, it can do a lot of different things. Uh, running horse against horse, it's really strong in the Midwest, up in the East, and uh, places like that. Uh, a lot of other places say their arena's not big enough to run horse against horse, well they'll run on time, and when you get to running on time, it's very difficult to come back in here and go horse against horse. But you know, after one run or two, they adjust to it pretty good. This, there, there's a, the, about three or four things that are really keys in running horse against horse at the bulls. First of all, you want to hit the timing light just right, not too soon. You right. go over. That's one element. Second element is you must come down and make a real good in pole. If you don't, you're going to fall behind. Then the second thing is, or third thing, you've got to be able to go through and leave them standing up. It's not easy. It looks easy up here where you and I are sitting. And uh, once you go through and back through, then if you're close, you better make a good end pull to come home. And then there's always one little element that nobody talks about, and that's luck. <laughs> luck makes the program. From Fort Worth, Texas, in the Will Rogers Memorial Coliseum, I'm Tim Top. Thanks for watching. That wraps up this edition of the Appaloosa Horse. Join us next month for more exciting action from the 2003 World Championship Appaloosa Horse Show, including a special look at the Hunters and Jumpers.